morning and do it. Wake up one morning and don't. You get your power back. Talk to me, man. It's simple. But you want to do it. You like it. Stop making it a devil. It's your will now. It's your decision now. It's a devil when you, when you try not to do it and you still do it. That shows you that there's a law working in you. When you would do good, evil is ever present. Somebody say, I don't understand. All right? But Delilah is a spirit. She's a rhythm. She's an energy. Now, let's deal with Delilah real, real quick. All right? I want y'all to write this down. Number one, Delilah. Delilah is a spirit that comes after your eyes, your discernment, your judgment, and your wisdom. She's always questioning what you see. All right? Now, we won't get into this exclusively, but generally, it needs to be understood, men are mostly visual. All right? Women are mostly auditory. This is why when the serpent came after Eve's heart, he went through her ear. But when Eve wanted to get Adam to eat the apple, she went through his eyes. All right? That's very important. Because hear me. All of what, a man is visual. This is why I'm going to do a message called Trophy Wife. No, seriously. Because a man simply wants something that looks good. I mean, it just, it's, it's like all the men just like. No, seriously. We want somebody that looks good. Right? A woman wants a man that she can be proud of. She don't want to have to hide your bank account. She wants somebody that say, they can be like, he take care of me. Yeah. Right? A woman wants safety and security. A, a man, he don't need all that. <laughs> Just stand there and look good. But now, I'm saying that to say that when temptation comes, the enemy will use a man's eyes. You sitting in the mall with your girl like. And then you got to do one of these. Oh. <laughs> and women, you need to know, just because he looked don't mean he likes. He don't love it. He don't want it. He's just visual. <laughs> Come on, me and say something, y'all. Help a brother out or something. Jesus. <laughs> Trying to make it easy on you, y'all. Right? Number two, let's keep going. Delilah makes a fool out of anointed men and women. Delilah is meant to embarrass you. Oh, yeah. Hear me. It's trying to embarrass you. Whatever it can do, if it can get you to tweet the wrong thing, like the wrong thing, say the wrong, whatever it can do to try to get you caught up where your testimony no longer has power. And Delilah uses comfort to do it. You ain't got to be anointed all the time. Be careful of laps. L-A-P-S, laps. The Bible says that Delilah allowed Samson to lay in her lap. If I had time, I would tell you that what that means is, <laughs> let's just say it like this. Her special stuff was always on his mind. Y'all ain't, yeah, 
When it says, the scripture says on the day of the Last Supper that there was a man that sat by Jesus named John, John the Revelator, who laid his head on the breast, on the breast of Jesus. Ephesians 6 says the breastplate is the place of righteousness. When it says that John laid his head on Jesus' righteousness, it means that Jesus' heart or whatever was important to Jesus was always on the mind of John. That's what it's saying. So when it says that his head was in her lap, it means that the only thing he could think about was how I'm going to get it. All day long, how am I going to get it? All night long, what am I going to do to get it? Because hear me, you may not want to admit this, but 80% of the time, you know what's on a man's mind? How am I going to get it? He's a nice guy. I know. But he's still thinking, how am I going to get it? He's saved. You shut up. He's still thinking. This is why, hear me, you will get in an accident if you are not a defensive driver. If you're in a relationship, you have to be on the defensive. You can't wait for an issue to arise for you to have standards. Oh, and the church said amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the next one. Delilah seeks to publicly humiliate, shame, and embarrass you through private struggles and personal compromises. Delilah seeks to publicly humiliate, shame, or embarrass you through private struggles and personal compromises. Just stuff that you compromise on that nobody else knows. Nobody else knows. And what it does is that it systematically, consistently corrodes your confidence. And when, hear me, when your confidence is corroded, but you got to continue to minister, it causes you to be fake. Because now you got to act like you're confident when you're really struggling with shame and guilt. Y'all follow me? Let's go to the next one. Delilah uses your secrets to corrode your confidence. To sustain, that's exclusivity. Hear me. Anybody that says to you, don't tell, don't tell nobody, you got to ask why. Don't, don't tell nobody. Why? Is it because your story differs from the real story? Why? What is the agenda? Let's keep going, y'all. All right, so I, I got to go. I got to go. Now. There are three phases of a relationship. I got to give you these and then talk about these seatbelts because I got to let you go. All right? Number one, there is friendship. Friendship. Number two, there is courtship. Or you can also put in parentheses dating. Dating. Most of us know it as dating. What is the difference between dating and courting? Courting is when the purpose of dating is marriage. Then you say, Pastor, shouldn't the purpose of dating always be marriage? No. All right? The first, the bridge between friendship and fiancé is dating. I should go out with you without any exclusive rights. All right? We should be able to go out together without us being exclusive so I can see how you act in public. I need to see how you act around people. I know how you act around me. Hmm. I need to see how you act around people. Because when you get around people, for some reason you forget about me. When you get around people, you get real prideful, real arrogant. You turn into a different person. I want to see how you treat me around your friends. Right? So you have friendship, that's 30-fold. You have dating or courtship, that's 60-fold, and then you have marriage, that's 100-fold. Now, this is what I want to tell everybody. Hear me. I don't care whether you are friends, whether you are dating, or whether you are married. You still need seatbelts. In every stage of a relationship, you need seatbelts in every single stage. It don't matter whether y'all are just cool. Whether y'all are trying to get there or whether y'all are already there, there should be seatbelts. Now, I'm going to give you three types of seatbelts. I'm going to pray for you, and then we're going to continue this next week. Number one, we need a seat. Now, hear me. Before I say this, I'm not dealing with your body because I feel like that's self-explanatory. All right? So I'm not going to deal with your body because you should already know that if they ain't paid for it,
All right? If they ain't, if they, let me not say paid for it. Amen. Because some of y'all got some cheat. Let me, let me, let me. So, so if they ain't locked, if they ain't married you, All right, now I hear you. You're going to do what you do. Now, because this is what I get all the time. Pastor, well, we already know we're going to get married. Or I really love them. Hear me. You are grown. <laughs> y'all ain't going to hear me. Y'all probably ain't going to ever hear this at any other church. Please hear me. You are grown. You can sleep with who you want to. See? Oh, you see that? Oh, God. <laughs> Did he just give us? No, no, no. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. You got your own relationship with Jesus Christ. I ain't got a heaven and hell to put you in. I'm sorry. I don't like you enough to be in your bedroom. I don't care what you're doing. God cares what you're doing. All right? Now, you say, you say Pastor, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. That's fine. But when you up at night crying, when your soul broken, when your heart can't let them go, when you still get, when you're going through soul torment, don't come to me. That's the residue of fornication. You can't help it. Once your soul gets involved, your heart going to get broke. So we can't fix that. That's just a law of nature. So hear me. You ain't going to hell. Do what you want to do. But when you can't get over them and now you married still thinking about your first, don't be... I'm sorry to break it to you, man of God, but it, it, anyway, okay. So, 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 there's three seatbelts. Number one, we need a seatbelt on our eyes. Let's go to Job 31 and 1. Come on, Brian, we got a little bit of time. Job 31 and 1, all right? Job 31 and 1, this is what Job said. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Y'all ain't ready for this Bible, bro. Look, it said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a maid? Now, the Hebrew says, I've made a commitment with my eyes. Why then would I look upon a maid? Job made a promise to himself. I'm only looking for three seconds. One, two, three. <laughs> three. That's all you get. Oh, that's a nice dress. That's it. After that, I'm looking around. God, man, y'all. All right, let me show you another scripture. Go to Matthew. Look at this scripture in Matthew. Matthew 5, 28. Jesus said it like this. If a man looks upon a woman with lust in his heart, what does that mean? That means if you look at her and say, I bet I know how she look out of that. I wonder what she looked at like having sex. Oh, I wonder what, that's lust. Don't shout me down, y'all, when I'm preaching good. That's lust. The moment you've done that, you've already fornicated. All right? You've already, so you don't repent when you do it. You repent when you think about it. Now, why do you do that? Because the Bible says, take every thought captive. The word captive literally means make every thought a slave. You're going to pick cotton all day. That means you're going to do what I say. I'm not going to do what you say. My thoughts are my slaves. I'm not my thought slave. If, you, if your thoughts can't do what you say, but you do what they say, they have more power than you. So, number one, you need seatbelt on your eyes. Don't look too long. Right? The Bible says if your eye be single, your body is full of light. Whatever you look at long enough will feel your desire in your heart. Number two, you need a seatbelt on your mouth. Hear me. Hear me. Number one, if you friends, hear me, y'all. If you friends, don't say, if you single, don't say stuff like, it ain't no good, men. I just put <laughs> on your mouth. Don't say that because you're going to get what you say. All right? Now, I, I, don't, I don't have time to read the scripture for you, so I'm going to go ahead and just give it to you so you can write it down. You can write down uh, Proverbs 18, 19 through 21. All right? Read all of those verses. But it literally says that a man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips, meaning that you're going to eat what you say. All right? 
If you're single, don't say stuff like, I'm going to always be single. Ain't no good men out there. Don't say stuff like that. All right? If, hear me. If you're dating, keep your mouth right. Don't say stuff like, this my hubby. What? Hey, yeah, I got I to gotta call wifey, let her know. Wifey? She talking to you and five of your friends. How is she wifey? Wifey? Can I, I'm going to give y'all a spiritual secret. If you're not married, don't wear their clothes. Clothes carry energy, scent, anointing, sweat, tears. It carries their spirit. So clothes, uh, whether it's clothes, kissing, all of these are what we call accelerants. It speeds up the pace of love. Your job is to control the pace of love. Even if it tries to go fast, uh uh-uh, I only known them for a month, it ain't going that fast. You control it so that it doesn't seduce your heart. Lastly, as you stand to your feet, come on, let's go home. I'm going to pray for you, all right? Lastly, you got a seatbelt. We already talked about seatbelt on your body. You got a seatbelt on your eyes. You got a seatbelt on your mouth. Hear me, married people, we don't say divorce. Unless he hitting you in your face. And we're in, the 21st, we, we, we in 2020. If she hitting you in your face, <laughs> pass, pass. We had to call the police. I said, man, you hit her? She hit me? Nidra? <laughs> we were like, hey, we don't play that. But y'all, be careful what you say to each other. If you're, if you're married, we don't say stuff like, man, I wish, man, I wish I never married you. This ain't going to work. What you mean ain't going to work? You going to make it work? I know you in 2020 and people make divorce so flippant and so normal. You made a commitment. I just want to know if your commitment to that person ain't no good, how is your commitment to God? got fake friends hear me it used to be women were catty now men be gossiping about men like there used to be men that had loyalty we were known by our word we talking as much as the females now whether you're friends hear me whether you're dating or courting, or whether you're married. You should have standards. Hey, I respect you. I'm not going to raise my voice at you. I got a seatbelt. And this is where I come from. You taking off shoes and stuff, oh, we're going to fight. You take off seatbelt, we got something to say. But if we're going to get to our destination on time and safely, you got to strap that thing up, all right? All right, I love you guys. This is my prayer for you as we leave that you would take an evaluation of your relationships. I gave y'all homework last week. That was to create a list of core values, standards, non-negotiables. Not just in marriage, y'all, even with your friends. I I told y'all this story before. My dad had a friend, his name was Cash Gary. I didn't know it then, but he was the drug guy. He was the drug guy. And uh, he came over. Every time he came, we loved him because he always had a wad of money, break us off a piece, and he always brought, like, toys that you knew he got from somewhere else. Because <laughs> they didn't come out of a box. you just like, okay. <laughs> That's a true story. And I remember one day he came over to give my daddy some drugs, and I don't know, maybe he was high, something was going on. But he put his finger in my daddy's face. 15 years of friendship was ended just like that because somebody didn't have their seatbelt on. Like, this your friend. You don't put your finger in your... There should be some type of standard. You're a grown man, Reuben. I should have a standard. I ain't going to buck at you. I'm definitely not going to buck at you. <laughs> but there's a friendship. If I got standards in friendship, how much more when I'm dating? 
Hey, we're going to date unto the glory of God. These are our standards. Now, we've all been on a flight. We had the seatbelt on and the light was on. But we had to go to the bathroom. We had to do something. Sometimes we get up at the wrong time. Sometimes we loosen our standard. That's fine. But when that, boom, when that light come on, remember, I am more than a conqueror to him that died for me. I'm, I'm not going to stay stuck in my mess. I have an opportunity to be all that God has called me to be. Why not buckle up so I can get there safely? Did y'all enjoy the word? Come on, let's put our hands together. Father, we bless you for your word. As you transform us by your word, by your presence, and by your spirit. Father, I pray for your people. As we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence, we thank you that your word seeps deep into our heart. Let it begin to grow so that it can bear fruit. Father, you said we shall know a tree by its fruit. Not by its gift, not by its hip, not by its muscles, but by its fruit, by its character. Now, Father... Every relationship that has stripped us, stripped us of wisdom and discernment. Come on, y'all. Our hands are lifted. Father, I pray now, give it back to them right now. Give them all the wisdom. Give them all the discernment. Give them the sensitivity. Restore it now again. This is our prayer. We love you. We bless you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Come on, everybody say amen. 60 seconds. Come on, y'all. Let's worship real quick. Come on.